Hello and welcome to this new look at uh, some new features of Worldographer that we just released. Thanks to our patron, patrons on Patreon, uh, we put out version 1.26 today. Uh, we also had version 1.25, but there was a minor bug with that, so we made that fix and put out 1.26 here. Um, the Patreon uh, allows you to vote for these new features, and in this case we're actually doing th the, the top three vote getters here. Uh, as well as uh, you get uh, a, a slew of icons, 60 to 100 new icons every month. Um, and here um, is a way to manage all that because over time that we've been doing this for a couple of years now, um, you've got a lot of icons and this new feature allows you to kind of um, pick which ones you want to load into Worldographer because if you load them all in, uh, your memory is just, uh, the, the computer's memory is just not going to be able to handle that many. Even if you've got a, a very large machine, that it gets complicated with um, video memory and how much memory is allocated to, to Worldographer and so forth. So it's best not to put in all of them, but you can certainly put in a slew. In fact, the program itself comes with uh, several hundred built in. So if we... <clears throat> Excuse me. If we go to this add uh, con on the on the configure menu, if we go to this add configuration subfolders option, you get a dialog like this. And what this is doing is it's scanning your uh, Worldographer folder um, for any subfolders there that have features, textures, or terrain subfolders of those. And if it, and I'm going to go over that. I'm going to pull up mine so you can see exactly what that looks like in a moment. But if it finds any of those special folders, then it will um, show them in the list here. So we had a medieval folder that has uh, at least one of those subfolders inside of it, and then Patreons is a, is a folder that I created to kind of manage all these Patreons. And then you can um, see that the, I had several of them loaded into the pro, into that folder. Um, and so it picked the ones that had features, um, terrain or texture subfolders, and likewise here. So if I wanted to pick Mesopotamian, or if uh, I wanted to pick uh, uh, the wizard towers here, you can um, uh, select those options from the list, hit OK. Then we can come over here to features, and you would see um, if I, uh, here we, had, we have them all added in now. These are the Mesopotamian ones. If I wanted to find the Wizard Tower ones, uh, oh. did I not pick the Wizard Towers? Configure, add configuration subfolders. Do, do, do. Oh, I see. I added the City Wizard Tower ones instead of the Classic Wizard Tower ones. So, hit OK. And then let's refresh that so there you go so there we've got our wizard tower ones again um, and that pretty much covers that part of the feature now let me show you how that gets configured so uh, this is my worldographer folder and it's uh, by default it's C users Joe or whatever your username is on the computer and then worldographer and then um, any the, your features your terrain and textures folders are automatically loaded into Worldographer. Any contents of those are aut automatically loaded into Worldographer, and you can go to our website, uh, worldographer.com, and look for the instructions for how to easily add icons into uh, Worldographer, and, and, and any of those um, get added automatically. But these other folders, so Medieval and Patreons, those aren't added automatically, uh, or any other, any other folders that you would add here. Um, but if you want the option to load them in just like I had done, if you add in, if you add in a features or a um, textures or terrain subfolder there, then those will actually uh, get loaded in if you go through the process that I just showed you. Likewise with Patreons. So here we have 2019, 2020, and then you have all of those options there, and likewise for the 2020 folder. Oh, let me dive into that though. And then if you pick one of these, you can see that it had a features subfolder. So um, that's how you make that happen. Um, it requires some setup, but once you've got it set up, then it, it, it's pretty seamless or smooth to do that. And like I said, it allows you to manage adding in a slew of icons into the program all at one time. All right, second thing we're gonna look at. 
um, is a, a, a tooltip option here. This allows you to get uh, details about your terrain or your features or your notes as you hover over. So, you know, if I pick the right spot here. So, um, there you go. So you can see the details of that. And that information has been in Worldographer for a very long time, um, from probably even from the very beginning. Yes, I believe from the very beginning. If I hit select on a, on a terrain, so if I go to this uh, dormant volcano here, you can see that these are the values for that dormant volcano. If I turn off the select, so you're not going to see the tooltip if you have a tool that you're actually working with. If you're placing new terrain, if you're drawing shapes, if you're selecting shapes, any of those things are selected, any of those toggles are selected, it's not going to show the tooltip, even if you have that option, show details on hover, set. Um, but if I turn this off, then I've got those options again. And so we can see here's our volcano, the elevation, the percent, the animals. These are percent values, how good the quality is of those particular things. Um, so in a volcano, you know, you've, you'd expect a good, some good metal constant, good metal and rock options. Um, not so good for uh, animals and, and plant life and so forth. Um, now, if we wanted to, uh, let me generate uh, nations and empires so we can get some cities and so forth on here. Um, and that just generates 10 by default because I picked 10 when I created this map. Um, and you can change it then or you can change it now as far as how many things are going to get put onto the map for you. Um, now, if I hover over a city icon, I, I get just that icon's name. However, if I uh, go to features here and go back up to the top of that drawer, if I select that particular feature and if I go to notes of selected, this auto generates some notes about that particular location and that was called Bermfield, I believe. So Bermfield, we'll give that the title. Hit save. Now I've got show notes on by checking this box right here. Um, and so that's why you see that yellow square there. If you don't want that, you can turn it off. And then if I hover over that when I don't have anything selected, because again, it's not gonna display the tooltip if I have anything selected over here. And I hover over this and you can see Burnfield and it gives me the, the so it gives me the title and it gives me the first, uh, I think 200 characters or so of, um, of that description. Uh, you can also add notes to anywhere else on the map if you'd like. I can hit add view edit note and I can go to uh, kind of like the middle of this desert area here and I can put in, you know, uh, lost city. Maybe I don't want to put an icon on the map because I don't want to tell anybody about it. Although we have GM only options for that as well. And I can, you know, type in whatever description I want to say about that particular thing. Hit save. And now if I hover over this particular spot when I have nothing selected, so including this, uh, so now it's going to give me those tool tips. And if I get the right spot here, there you go. Lost city, my description. Uh, this also works for our settlement maps. Uh, the settlements, all the buildings actually get uh, information generated about them when we create, the, uh, when they're placed on the map automatically. Um, so then you can hover over uh, as long as you have this option set, uh, show details on hover, and it'll give you the beginning of all of those notes as you, as you hover around. Okay, so that's uh, the second thing that our, our patrons had voted for this uh, last month. Um, and so we're going to get on to the third now. The third is actually the one that had the highest vote getting, which was a matter of controlling how uh, lines resize across map levels. Now, if you're familiar with Worldographer, you know we've got world, continent, and kingdom uh, map levels. Um, so let me first put some rivers on here. Uh, let me turn, yeah, I turned that off already. So let me go to generate rivers, generate 10 of them. Then we'll just surf around for a couple that are near each other that are not too... Yeah, okay, so these are, are covered. Um, well, maybe there's something better over here. No, nope, those are covered by darker shapes and um, we can generate some more though. Generate some more rivers. 
Let's see what that does for us. So that puts, oh, we got some crisscrossing rivers over there, which wouldn't make a lot of sense. Um, but for our purposes, we've got a lot of crisscrossing rivers. Oh, no, not quite crisscrossing. All right. So let's get let's get these two let, let's get these down here because we've got several here. Let me go to select and I'm going to select this shape and I'm going to turn off the fill just so it's a little bit easier to see those rivers there. And then I will select instead. Uh, I will select instead this river here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this level change scale uh, factor here, this 100%. So I'm gonna set it to 50%. This feature is all about controlling how lines resize. And this this works for lines. It's not gonna work for your other shapes because it, it, that kind of doesn't apply. Uh, and, and you'll kind of see what I mean by that, uh, I believe. Um, so if I set this to 50%, that's not gonna do anything on, on this map level. Let me turn off uh, selection, but we know which one it was of these two particular rivers. Um, and so if I create though this continent level, so worldographer, like I was, I believe I was starting to say, is we've got world, continent, and kingdom levels, and this controls how those scale across those. For time, I'm just going to make this three to one, hit OK. And you can see that this river here, this is the one that we had selected, is a whole lot thinner than the other one because we we wanted to to um, uh, kind of make it a little bit more realistic at that at that other size on the world level we want that thickness because if it's much th much thinner it's it's not going to look uh, it's not going to be apparent it's not going to match that style of map however on on the continent level uh, this starts becoming too thick. It, you know, it, it's it's half a half a hex wide essentially at this point, and and um, you know your scale of your maps are typically, especially at a three to one ratio, um, your scale of the map. This is going to be several many miles wide at this point, even at the kingdom level. So let's go kingdom as well. Let's do three to one again here. You know, okay. And it's creating that level for us. And so again, it went 50% again. So now we're at one quarter the size. Um, and, and so at this level, uh, you know, your, your um, hexes, even these smallest hexes in here are, um, you know, six or 12 or even 20 miles, especially since we did a, a, a three to one ratio. And we have a, a, an article on the World Worldographer website um, describing how to size your world if you want to do that in a realistic way. And actually, you know, we'd want to start with a slightly larger map and then do a six to one and a six to one. And then we'd get to a point where each of these is probably five or six heck, uh, miles across. Um, and so for one of these to be uh, this wide, it, it's not going to uh, be anywhere near realistic, you know, to have a, a, a river that's uh, six or eight or 10 miles across. Um, here, we've got something, even this would be one mile across, but we're not quite, we're not quite trying to do something that's uh, realistic, but it does uh, get a little bit closer and you still have a, you still want a certain a thickness just to be able to see it because if we went, went much thinner, uh, then it would be, be hard to see. But if you wanted to, you can adjust those, uh, th those settings, you know, and, and it's probably best to work from the world level for when you want to select them. So now we're back up to here and we could, um, go um, select that that river again and do you know 25% if you wanted to and let's deselect it and so now if we go down a continent you can see it is much thinner maybe too thin because it is the three to one ratio. So it, 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 because we did a three to one ratio, that would be one third, but since we picked one quarter, now our line is thinner than what, uh, what it was at the higher level where it'd be a little bit thicker. And then we can do it again and it got thinner again. So you might wanna do a 33% if you wanted to keep a consistent size for a three to one map. Now, if you went six to one, then of course you're gonna to wanna to do 16.6% .6 or 17%, <coughs> excuse me. But that's the third new feature. 
So again, these are the, the new features in, in Will Dyer for version 1.26. And I'd like to thank my uh, patrons for supporting that, uh, supporting these new features every month. Uh, you, can, you can look for us there at uh, patreon.com slash inkwellideas. Thank you.